Hello and welcome as today's date comes in that of Wednesday, the third day of June 2020. My name is Derek. This is the Money Charts channel. We're like always all bets, trades, and of the like within each his own risk and their own reward. Our year-to-date highs have been retested most recently. And a very sudden rally from the uh, Rudy Gobert lows in the middle of March as it's managed to continue the pattern of significant higher lows. With the uh, uh, last one, maybe this one, I guess we'll say right now. The last, the current low is in at 9,135, but we have a low in here on May 25th. We have this low here in early May. You can call this breakout lows in here in the middle of April. And then we have this low in here from March as it was uh, finding support on what was the declining, the neutralizing 18 average. And, and now you see the 18 average start to rise and really go sideways. But since it's went sideways, a lot of things have been going on within the last few days, just looking at this. One has been spending a lot of time to the 18 average of highs. That uh, one situation I think is a very bullish uh, scenario. But just with what happened yesterday, I want to go over the move. We have the price action come down to the 18 average of lows. And right now it has managed just to get to this little area in here. As it is. So, do we have the potential for this to be a failed breakout? Well, we'll take a look at that on the shorter term time frame and try to make sense amongst the situation. So, uh, well, let's go ahead and do that because we know breaking out above this resistance. And, well, here we have established on May the 7th, I'm looking to break out, but not quite on the 14th. Uh, a few days, a lot of strength on the 18th, 19th, but not so much. And, here it comes back up to it on the 28th, shows a lot of strength, and then the breakout occurs on the 1st of June, but it instantly gives it back, does get above this high. So therefore, yeah, it's either that failed breakout, which is thus what can now start to talk about retracing from this low to this high, or if it's uh, one of those uh, successful breakouts and this corrects successfully short term, then it can be uh, an inevitable great long-term situation. We take a look at this move. This move is just an extremely fast, like, down one. Since then, what we've seen with this is that it's had a long sideways consolidation. But this hour, or the previous one at 6 a.m., it's up two-thirds of a percent. And so far, it's only four minutes into this one, so I'm not putting anything into it. But let's just go ahead and take a look at how this looked on the one-minute time frame, though. Back in yesterday's uh, session, didn't mean to do that rant line because... I got to click the button twice, which is this one here to tell me to stop the drawing tool, which would be this in here. And uh, anyway, that was just, why is it not deleting? Oh. Why is it not deleting? There we go. I had to push control Z about a million times. Anyway. There's the down move here. 10.46 down 3.16%. And then a pause minute. Followed by the next one down 2 and uh, change. And the next one was down a decent amount as it went down to 9,200. So it was down about uh, 3% or so. Again, it does that before that situation. So going back, scrolling. What Did, did anything tell us before this event this was going to happen? So the period beforehand, it looked like this. Breaking down from the 18 after this in here, just and the start of it really. So when this happened and the time was in the last 10 seconds, 20 seconds, of course that I don't know. But if you were to take a look at it at the time, you'd be like, okay, so where's key support? Oh, key support is roughly around here. So I wanna see how it holds amongst this level. And then of course, it obviously blows by there with the monster, monster decline and the ultimate just going sideways ever since that point. But we can see things have changed even on the short term now as it's managed to get above this level of resistance. I guess I just put a line on it from the high that I had right in there. And this occurred at uh, 6 o'clock, pretty much right on the news. No, so a statement, basically, uh, more than anything is being done 
that this thing is ready to break the sideways consolidation pattern. 15 minute chart. Do we see anything to help us out here? Um, I suppose if I just look at this, you see more of that uh, same statement. There's the breakout at six o'clock and it's doing the sideways consolidation. And when this happens, it's one of those either ors, failed move, real move. So the early indications have told us that's going to happen. So now what we can take a look at is decide where do we want to go from Fibonacci? And I haven't calculated yet. I like to do kilos or breakout spots. In this case, it's only going to be the kilo. And the kilo on here is this one here. And it's that of 9,135. So I'm going to enter that into my calculator. And I'm going to do high divided by low. So what is the high? Which high do I choose? Well, I can choose the breakdown highs in here. And I could choose these highs. So for now, I'm going to choose this, which comes in at 10,429. And for this case, the numbers are small. You're really going to get the same levels if I do both linear and this one, which is exponential. I do high divided by low. And it's going to be such a tiny number when I take uh, this is barely over 1.1. And then I do it to the exponents of these numbers, which is point, the 0.382 and the others that you see, and then multiply the low. Traditionally, what a lot of people do is they do high subtract the low, get the differential of the numbers, which would be about 1,300. And then they multiply the percentages instead of exponing it. And then they add it to the low. And you'll, you'll get pretty much the same numbers in this example because the volatility is microscopic. But when you get the big numbers, when high divided by low, and you start to notice even at 1.3, 1.5, but definitely big at 2 and higher, that to me, this is the more, to me, this is a better way of doing it. So if I get the right, to me, I call it the right numbers, but the same numbers on the short term anyway. And then when it's long term, I mean, these numbers just work so well usually. I just don't know what the better FIB number is going to be if it's this high or this high. And I'm going to be looking at this now. So the first place that we come up to is the 94.25, which is a 23.6%. So 94.25, um, obviously, most certainly, uh, seems to be relatively key. So it's just roughly in that area where we go. So it was supported here, supported here. And then after that, the next level you'd be looking at is a 38.2, which comes in at uh, 9609 which pretty much is where we're looking at now. Probably may have already hit that high. We most certainly have, so that's 96.09 here. So the price action now from yesterday's breakdown has managed to get above the 23.6, support it, and then this breakout here has now managed to get to the, uh, well, the 38.2. If I'd be looking at any type of short-term correction, so if any sound came by there on the, this because of the microphone there, but if there was a click sound, but from any short-term Fibonacci's, now I got to figure I'd be doing maybe from this low to this high. But generally speaking, this is the area where if it's going to come back now that it's made this statement, the must-hold area, 18 average of lows, things like that to hold a support. If it's able to get above this level, and we've already seen within it that it has resisted it for a decent amount of time, meaning period, there's where it hits. Period number two, three, four, five. Although it did just recent, no, 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 9609. 9609, it hit it. I mean, exactly. Whatever. It was just luck. So we've had five periods in which it has hit it. So therefore, 99.14, that is the next key number followed by 10,000 even. So 99.14, I mean, this thing just fell down really, really fast. It's like, you can say that, oh my goodness, there's just no resistance here. We had nothing here. Okay. Well, that would mean, we'll wait and see because maybe there is. And if there's no resistance here, fast move to the next level, which would indicate so many things if that were to happen. 
one of which would be the next key number 10,100, which is this congestion area. But of course, one of the other things is, oh, just yet another huge failed move. And if you have a situation where this, and I don't expect it to happen, but if the breakout pattern just has a monster vertical rise and it violates those key levels that I've talked about, then the situation of this pattern is just an extreme bullish one as we continue to move forward. We are, I believe, in interesting long-term times because as this all plan out, I'm just I'm pretty much just giving short-term analysis for the situation. So I'm gonna finish it off a little bit of long-term because we've had these situations of the breaks in that area. So from key low, the 2018 end of the year lows to the start of 2019 highs, there's a manage of one, two, three, four key lows with the last three being lower. This high, well, this high matches also with this one. And then within this sale in here, you can say, well, you know what? If it goes back, we could make an inverted head and shoulders pattern and it could. But what would be stronger than an inverted head and shoulders pattern is doing what it's doing. Instead of going back down to this key area, having how, showing how this is congested amongst this area and giving you the exact same type of uh, reasoning for why the inverted head and shoulders pattern is good and the, the probability for why it should have significant gains. But as it goes, these key levels of resistance are quite simple to look at without having to use any mathematical uh, calculations. Simply, we've had many resistance hits in here. So therefore, we've had this previous level, which is a decent size move for what it is, from key resistance to where the breakout high would be if there's going to be one. So I'd be looking here around that 13,000 mark. And then breaking north of that, well, to me, is previous high, and that's near 20,000, and breaking that is uncharted new territories. Showing further within the Fibonacci that I've been calculating for the last uh, year and a half or so is this key one between this low and this high, which after the last support here at the 48, no resistance really much so at 63 and, and a little bit here so far at 98. But again, Fibonacci would be telling you previous high and then after this, high after that, and as it goes, or so it goes. And now moving over to alts, and I'm going to do a little, go through them a little bit quickly since I'm already past the 12 minute mark. This is dominance first, the BTC dominance, the percentage of the market cap, which is Bitcoin. Way back in the day, it was all Bitcoin really. And then 2017 happened, and OMG in the sense of 97% down to like a third. And then since the 2018 January highs, Altcoins have been getting their ass kicked versus Bitcoin. We can see this pattern of higher highs and higher lows. Thus, Bitcoin, that's been dominated since the last altcoin run. There's this series in here. We got this series. We got this series. And then we got this series. There's a higher highs and lows. An attempt to break out, not so much. And really, while it's in this range, this is... Uh, Still a whole bunch of yada yada stuff. So when I th see things like, and I'm going to get to the theta chart, but when I see things like the theta chart, it's making a rally while the crypto market is in n n not that of a dartboard rally. If there's a dartboard rally, this thing is going to be at a decent decline like we've seen in here. And now, so with that being said, it's still just more of the wait and see game. I've been looking at this pattern here for quite some time and it's quite boring, but... And it's boring until it's not, and it's not when it breaks either support or resistance. So then, move first alt will be theta, because I've talked a lot about that. It's had this wild, wild move with its fourth shot at having price action go well north of the 3000 level. For it did so in the Binance open. Price action was on Huobi before such, but... As Binance opened it in the uh, about uh, two years ago, the price action got up there and then it declined to, uh, in this case, it, it congested around 12, 1300. And then the one day in here, the quick move, the intraday move, pullback, and then several weeks to go up, several weeks to go down. And we've seen another several weeks to go up. And well, last week was the high at 6400. 
or six, yeah, 6,400. And these are approximate Fibonacci numbers because I calculated it. And the 23.6 down number was in at around 4,000. The 38.2% down number was in at around 3,000. And the 61.8% uh, was about 1,900. Those are just approximate numbers. They're not in that of exact ones. Continuous move up as beforehand. It made its announcement of an attempt to get above the 18 average in here. And that was a successful, it was a successful one as it had a nice run higher, higher low, broke that established resistance and then a nice higher low. Again, it broke that resistance. Again, it broke that resistance and then just flew to its top, at least its current intermediate term top at this frame. It has not found support so far at the 18 average of lows. It could still do so and hold and stay above it, but when I say that, that means the level that it establishes below it, which has been around 2,400, pretty much needs to hold and it has to recapture relatively soon. Will that happen? I don't think so. I think we are, and I'm hoping as well that the move does come with a breakdown below two, especially as I mentioned, we do not have a dartboard rally. This is an individual move. So what looks to happen, what would also be ideal for myself is that this would come back down to this. And then in time, when cryptos just go stir crazy, this will go stir crazy again. But as we uh, can see in here, when I take a look at this on a shorter term level, I mean, it's, I mean, this support kind of doesn't count because it was established after here, but it kind of does in the sense, it's just sick that when I bring up Fibonacci levels, they just happen to coincide very well with previous results because the, you didn't know what the high was until, well, the high came in at the 9 a.m. stamp on May 27th. But on the way down, these were all sufficient, and we can see that it supported at 1,300 hours on the day of the top, but not for long. It had about uh, three periods of pause, and then it broke down on the 1,600 stamp, unable to even resist it. And a fast, concise move, taken only about... Uh, eight or nine periods with a lower high that did not come back to where it came from. And even the second one could even make it to Fibonacci on the 4 a.m. stamp. But it did support the 3,000 or so area. And then the long, 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 long sideways consolidation. They'll be supporting again on May 29th at the, late in the day. And then microscopic volatility to follow then there after that. And the more often you test a key level, the more likely it is you take it out and you can see in here that the takeout was May 30th at 1800 hours, down three and a half percent that hour alone. And since that point, decent decline, down like 300 fast, 400 points really quick. And then after this correctionary move, more decline of a lower low, but we had this rally happen. May 31st, it comes up and now at this time, it's resisting the area that once was that key area of support. Okay, okay, so now we got the must hold area around 27, 18 average of lows is important. And well, there's where it's supporting, but this is the hour here, which is uh, that of uh, two days ago at 1900 hours, telling us that we are not supporting that. And since then, we've resisted in the band, resisted in the band, and, and it's just stayed that way. And now we're at an interesting, interesting spot of indecision the the size between the 18 average of lows and highs is minutely small thus it's going to be ready probably for a significant break pattern i suppose if this thing because the statement has told me and it's look and it's been a lot of time within it that this is making a play to the next key fib of 1900 that if it doesn't even come close and it comes up to this previous high. Yeah, there might be resistance here. But if, and most likely, if it breaks it quick, this thing could be like, like, a, like a charge gas of it's like mega proportion moves to the upside. I don't think that's going to happen, but I, that's what would be the case. Because right now, as far as this is concerned, this is neutrality in itself when I'm looking at this, just in the band. Like, how am I supposed to look at this and say it's going to go up or down? Of course, because of the statement, uh, that's why I think that we're going to be having ahead. If it breaks it above this resistance, I'm going to have a little bit of, uh, it's going to be difficult for me to give uh, the bias of the doubt within the short term time frame. Thus, a lower height of this could easily be possible too as well. 
But uh, on the break below, because we've established support at around 2,500 change multiple, if this gives in within the sideways range, I'd be expecting a fast move to 1,900. As it goes, and then uh, the key thing for the long-term time frame, I mean, it hasn't held any of this before. It isn't such. It's been a long, grinding time. Is to hold this 18 average of lows on the weekly, and most importantly, just stay above around 1600 Satoshi. That I, th I think it, I think it'll do that as well. But uh, anyway, that's theta. And next up is D DGB or Diga or DG Byte or however it's pronounced. I don't get paid, and I don't. And price action doesn't care about pronunciation, at least in my case. And the high of. Uh, Close to 300 occurred a while ago now, May the 6th, so about a month. Since then, it has filled a little bit of this empty space with, space with these May 21st, 22nd lows near 145. But as far as market analysis, there's breakout lows that comes to these highs. Correctionary move, but unable to break out on this opportunity. And then it breaks down, so now reversal of trend is what we're looking at. There's its first move below, and now within this newly declining, we've resisted it, and now we're showing this weakness on the lows. Now, interestingly here, we had the rally yesterday, but we could see in today's session that it's all being rejected right now. So maybe this is a little bit more of decline room left as well. After all, these things go up, these things go down. Um, I mean, it still hasn't broken down below this, but I'm just not too optimistic on this at all. Uh, getting uh, as far as getting like any type of breakouts for it, I mean we had the failed one in here. It, it's a it, this looks a little difficult to decide at least on this time frame here. Here's what here's what makes it a little interesting I suppose at least on the hourly chart after this consistent decline, there's a, a clear breakout indication and a huge statement and the fact that it went 18 average of lows means absolutely nothing. Because the three hour chart will show successful 18 average of low support. What I do need to see is hold this when I have a point A low to a point B key high, which would be. We got this low and we got this high. I mean, you can just use the Fibonacci there, hold wherever the 61.8 is. That's the must hold area. Hold this area where it came from. Just because the 18 average of lows here doesn't mean that's where I think it needs to hold. But if it does hold this and you see all this Yadda Schneidings and it gets above this now established resistance in here, then you look at a good setup. And then if we see weakness along this area, well, most likely it's not going to come down to support, but it's going to make a new leg lower below that as well. And we'll finish this off with an PIVX. I'm going to use the Binance charts. I know there's a lot of data before this, but. Monthly chart, I mean, like a lot of coins, been getting its ass kicked. So here we got something that was about a half a million, over a half a million that's went down to 4,800. Or about a normal 100x loss, just yada yada stuff. Yeah, normal 100x loss. Risk reward, how risky these cryptos are. So when you think about stuff like, oh, how much do I want to put into a crypto account if I just want to, or count, when I say account, BYOB, be your own bank, and that of... How much of my uh, investment allocation should I put in? And if you're thinking on the low end side, well, this is a, I mean, cryptos have such a high upside, you really don't need to invest too much, which makes it not only to me an, an easy, I'm not going to say easy to put it in, but easy to get into it as one situation as far as from that idea. And especially if you think Bitcoin's shit and it's no good and that you get into it. Well, why would you do that? Well, what happens if you're wrong? Well, that means maybe you got fiat currency that gets destroyed with inflation and then you lose your purchasing power and you're, economically speaking, you're in horrible shape. Yet, if you would have, of course, bought a bit of Bitcoin, bit of, buy a bit of silver, uh, maybe it wouldn't be as bad. I'm, I'm just saying, maybe case, maybe they're not, but I have an unfortunate feeling that with a lot of people, they're going to have a hard time and so confidently they are oh i might i got 275,000 fiat debt notes and i'm not gonna buy silver and i'm not gonna buy cryptos i'm so happy and then three months later holy shit life sucks y you just never know why of course they're not going and doing that type of stuff well i'm not gonna get into that this daily chart of pivx let's well so from this decline 
You come up to this, this is just simply flattening out the band. This little bit of resistance we can see was kind of supported here. And this resistance we can see was kind of supported in here. And this little resistance was kind of supported in here. And volatility is higher. Uh, and, and we've had this level of resistance break. If we come down, next level of support is going to be around uh, 4,300. But the setup on this to me, wow, you can see, if you're talking about what strength that the 18 average of highs is, but even when you notice this day in here, even, you have a breakout noticeably above and it comes back. And then what do we do this day, next day? Has a little small rally attempt, small comeback, and then big move. In this session, continuation getting above yesterday's intraday's highs, thus now at levels not seen since this move back in March. Okay, how about the hourly chart? Does this give us any indication of such an oh boy? Well, just showing how this has got just I mean this thing hasn't stopped yet, and uh, with the daily, this thing is telling me that it's looking to break out. It's been very very strong so far. So this level again of resistance being supported, but what I like to see in here is how from this breakout in here, we resist and stay within this area that I had very little time at. So what I'm going to do now, and I haven't looked at even shorter term time frame than the hour, I'm just thinking, hour, I'm just thinking about this now, is I'm going to draw a line in here because, we'll have to push it twice. Uh, just because I can see when it made this move, it was, I don't know how short it was, but within the hour it was very quick. So I can see that it's congested here very nicely. And this hour in itself has had a breakout, a little bit of a pullback within even shorter term analysis. But if I just say, go ahead and take a look at this on the four minute, I can see that this high was very quick. And even then it really had like no action above 45.17. And now it supported it for a while, although it failed, but not really, high or low, and it regained itself. And now a clear, clear break. So very, very short term, if I'm looking at where it must hold, I'm looking at this low, the high it's established, 61.8%, where we came from here, 46.83 is a must hold area in a very short term time frame. But as it goes, this thing has made the statement that it is really to, ready to break out. When these cryptos go, they can fly like it's no tomorrow. So the possibilities for this in the next 5, 10, 15 days to be at 10,000 Satoshi or 15,000 Satoshi, which would be 3x from here, and it's a lot higher than most normal days because it's made that statement for it to happen. And just like we've seen with Theta, it happened, it had a huge move. Of course, that individual move is over. And if this has a move, it will happen. And then when it's done, it will be over as well too. And it will retrace because that's what these markets do. They go up and they go down. And the bigger they go up, well, the bigger the recorrection that you should be expecting there after that. Okay, let me just sense for let me just quickly take a look at some other ones. Or really that of just Tezos to finish it off with. And I haven't planned this in advance. I just felt while I'm here. Uh, daily chart is showing a lot of uh, consolidation within the 18. Uh, unable to break down or break out. It's had a lot of resistance hits here around 3100 and not as many support hits, but has but hasn't had much opportunity as well as a need to anyway, because it just seems to be spending more time in the short term within the upper end of this range. Overall from this move, big move here from the uh, near Halloween lows up to the December highs and a nice higher low rally, huge higher high move. And we have managed to support this previous area where it came from. And then you look at it, okay, well, here's where it's a little bit of concerning, but, but still nothing to break down. Concern level number one, when this thing rallied back in April, it matched the high, which is fine and dandy, but it didn't break it. But now the must-hold area is in here at about uh, 2,800. And, I mean, it went below it a bit, but it's whole, it so far held and stayed above it. And we still have this rising 18. It's just that... If this thing, because it was able to break out here, a little bit of weakness here, I'm really going to have to deem this entire thing just a, a range-bound market 
and, until it can break out, especially because on break in and breakdown, support and resistance are the obvious spots. So the big support level is at about 2400 if this thing fails in here, it's going to be a decent decline just to get down there, but I'm going to expect that there's a decent chance. And even for that matter, 22 Fib, it's just this was a real Fibonacci fail, which is very rare to happen. But with that being said, I'm going to go with previous low and keep point at 24. If this breaks above previous high, then we're going to be looking at the triple hit area, pretty much at around 3,700, and then up to the 4,000 number. And as it goes, if this support level doesn't hold then we'll be talking about definitely piercing the 22 fib or whatever. But, and again, I, I maybe 50, 50, but I'd be, I mean, just because of the fib fail, I'd be looking at maybe 1868, 2000 even, or I'd be recal trying to recalculate it at that time. And if we have a situation of breaking out above, we're breaking to the high side, yeah, maybe I have a little bit of short-term resistance at 32, but the ultimate one I'd be thinking is near. And again, near this point, breaking it above it, I'd be thinking a good move, concise move, not only to the five-figure marks, but even probably concisely even going north than that. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.